There's not a day where I am just okay. Like every day I'm okay and not okay. Um, and that, that is all right. You know, that, uh, that's, that's part of, I think, what it means to be a human, or at least uh, to be a human who shows up. You know, I was writing something over this past week about how, um, you know, if, if, if our hearts aren't being scraped against something, always, then what's, what's the point of any of this? You know, like, like we should hurt and we should learn how to carry hurt and we should learn how to hurt more inside of us, you know, because that allows us to know that we are here and present and with others who are also hurting, um, you know. Uh, so anyway. <laughs> if our heart's not scraping against something, then why are we here? The things that scrape against our hearts, that makes it wince, that makes it scream, that makes it cry, are the things that also remind us that we're still here and we're present for what the human experience is. Perhaps, like with many things, you know, we have ownership of something and we like, want to, to keep it whole, to keep it pristine, to keep it working. And so like the best way to do that with so many things is to like take care of it and make sure that it doesn't get hurt, you know? That like my, my printer uh, doesn't break down, you know? Uh, that my clothes uh, are without stain, arriving at the end of our life with, ah, my, my heart is whole, it is not broken, you know? I don't want to arrive at the end of my life with my heart looking like this cup. I want it to be functional, I want it to be of use, um, but my task isn't for my heart to, to arrive at the end of all this unsullied. An unsullied heart at the end of it means that I didn't use it. I, I, I want to use my cup. I want to drink from it, you know? Um, I want to drink from my cup every day. Um, I want to, to fill my cup and offer to others that they might drink from it, you know? And my heart is the same. Um, I don't want to have put it somewhere in a cabinet and close the door and let dust softly fall onto it. And then 80 years from now, take it out and be like, all right, where, where, do, I, where do I bring this? Who do I hand this to? You know, um, that's a lifetime of not getting to, um, to understand this thing that I've been given. Yeah, I don't wanna be hesitant and precious about whether my heart is scraping against something um, for fear that it might crack. Like, you know, I say that now. <laughs> while, you know, like, while not in like the throes of like uh, personal individual heartbreak, you know, that like, uh, you know, there's uh, definitely those times in one's life when one's like, oh my God, why does it hurt so much to feel? <laughs> Why does it hurt to love? Like, oh, I want nothing to do with any of this. Take this from me, you know? Um, but, but all that is worth it, you know? We don't know anything about what is actually happening in the lives of other people. What isn't or is happening behind any given wall, behind any given door, 
behind any given person's face and, and heart. I have no idea what part of their humanity is, is shining and what part of their humanity is suffering. And let me be gentle then in the way in which I walk through like this field with them, however brief it may be. When we are able to come across things that other people have made that put into words, put into existence, put into feeling, the things that we experience and feel that we might not know how to illuminate and offering it up to others as perhaps something that they are able to find their way um, inside of their own self. Attempting to do that is a thing that I enjoy doing. And attempting to do that is a thing that I feel good at doing. I will sometimes say poems out of the window of this room and invite people to sit with me in, in hearing that, you know? And so sometimes folks will come and they'll just sit on their chairs or stand on their feet or throw a blanket down in the street and uh, keep cars from going down the roadway and uh, listen to poems. And, you know, the hope is to offer up a space where people are able to be and to be inside of something being given to them to be inside of space with each other. Um, and what does it mean to spend time with people, even if we don't know them, to spend time with other things in the world and what passes between us, seen or unseen. If there is something that people are being invited to witness that is very specific and very tangible, then maybe it might give way to like, oh, there is something happening here that is doing something inside of me. It is lightening something inside of me. Um, it is beautying something inside of me. There's an aspect where reading poems out of this window at sunset on a Friday night, you know, is an invitation for people to, to bear witness to the ways in which like our world is constantly delivering things to us that we might normally not see. Evening, everybody. Um. Thanks y'all for coming. Who, uh, who's, who's, who's joined this, this patch of asphalt before? Welcome, welcome, welcome back. Um, who is uh, joining this asphalt for the first time? Welcome for the first time. My name's Anise. Uh, I, I'm the current poet laureate of Oregon. This is my, my studio where I sit and write, I sit and draw. So thanks for coming tonight. I got this poem for y'all. Anise, is love not but a bearing witness to another's unlearning of what they are and giving them the space unafraid to do so? Anise, is love not but allowing another to bear witness to our own unlearning of self and in the face of the fear that they may go as a result of this? Just as it can be very, very frightening to love someone in a manner that gives them the strength and the space to be who they fully are, that might result in them no longer being 
here with me. And so if I love the others in the fullest way possible, then I am in favor of and supporting whatever ways in which that their love for their self flourishes and grows. It means simply of like, how do I get to just like be here for how this person steers their ship? And for part of that time, perhaps my ship that I'm steering gets to be steered alongside them. And the two of us together, the three of us, the four of us, the 20 of us, get to experience this world that we're all bearing witness to. And we also get to bear witness to each other experiencing that world. And maybe at some point, somebody is gonna steer their ship this way and I'm gonna steer my ship this way. And that's sad, but it also means that like there was a period where we got to like bear witness to each other and have ourselves be born witness I love the word friend. I just love the way it sounds. Um, I love the way it feels. Um, and of course, both of those are also inevitably connected to what, what it means. This David White poem, it starts with, in what world is friendship not the greatest love? You know, in this part, he says, the ultimate touchstone of friendship is witness. The privilege of having been seen by someone and the equal privilege of being granted the sight of the essence of another to have walked with them and believed in them. And sometimes just to have accompanied them for however brief a span on a journey impossible to accomplish alone. Um, you know, I find it so miraculously beautiful that we get to travel on alone, potentially, you know? Because ultimately our, our life is alone. We enter in alone, we exit alone, we are alone in our bodies. But somewhere in that, there's moments, and sometimes those moments are small, and sometimes those moments extend our entire journey of living, where we don't have to be alone, you know? Um, and that's just like such a wondrous and beautiful thing. Whatever our experiences are with this strange, funny, stupid thing called love is, um, all of it, large and small, near and far, is but uh, more and more carvings of ourselves that we might create a greater capacity um, to continue loving in this world for the very, very short time that we are here, you know? Um, a blink. Um, thank y'all so much for coming out this evening. Uh, I got this last thing to send you off. The deer. My heart is a deer walking across a lake. In winter, it is cold, but this means he can make it across. If it were spring, the hoofs of my heart through the ice would fall. My heart is a deer leaving no trace on the lake he has just crossed. What he walked over is now only river, snow from the mountains, now water filled with fish, going from where they were born in the direction of home.
Thanks for watching our film. Every story we've made is possible thanks to the support of our patrons. And if you'd like to continue to support us to make stories that explore the infinite beauty of being human, sign up on Patreon. Thanks.